Hey there, Sign Folk. It's Sean the Sign Guy. I'm back. So, every once in a while, uh, we always come across issues. And this is one of these things that, uh, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one that it happens to. You get a piece of equipment, you have the software, you think everything's running good, and then all of a sudden, crap just goes haywire for one reason or another. So, um, yeah, stick with me, and we're going to talk about that. All right, guys. So, uh, you, you know, I, I didn't really do a video on this subject, but um, so something happened about two months ago um, and uh, it really, really set me back. I thought that I was prepared, but apparently I wasn't. Um, we had a, uh, a computer or well, we didn't. It wasn't a computer. It was the hard drive that crashed. Um, so we have some property back behind our uh, behind the shop. Um, it was 10 acres and they started developing it. Well, apparently they kept hitting the freaking power lines and it kept knocking the power out to our house. Anyone that knows anything about electronic stuff, you know, it's not so much when the power goes out, but when it comes back on, that's a heck of a surge. Um, we had an issue with our air conditioner, but we also had an issue with uh, blue screen on, uh, on the computer here. Um, <laughs> luckily i backed all my files up that's not what this video is about but i backed all my files up that wasn't the issue but i'm kind of leading to the reason why i think um the issue happened that i'm going to be talking about so when when the when the hard drive crashed um obviously i had to reload everything um it was just the the window startup sequence when askew it uh, windows would not start my files everything was there it was all good i don't know why my camera is doing that um all the files all the programs and everything were there i just could not get windows to boot up so that i could access flexi so what i had to do is i had to get another hard drive that already had windows on it luckily and i had to reinstall basically flexi on the new hard drive unfortunately with flexi their money grab um see i have um backups of everything i i'm not cloud-based so i had the hard copy of my flexi and i can't remember i think it's 12 flexi 12 and i have the usb uh, dongle for it so so Flexi would not run from the hard drive of Windows that wouldn't boot up. So I had to reinstall Flexi on the drive where Windows was operating. That meant that I had to go back to Flexi. I had to download their new 12 version, um, which I was still completely licensed to, but a couple things changed. Okay, guys, what I'm trying to say is because... I had to re-download my version of Flexi that I currently, oh, so Flexi still controls the files and they updated version 12. My guess is that the production manager aspect of how it processes the profiles must have changed. That's the only thing that I can guess. The same three profiles that I have always used, never been a problem, are now a problem with the new new version of Flexi 12 that they had updated to. Now granted, the other version of Flexi before it crashed was on this computer for, I'm going to say five years, five years, before I actually had to go back and reinstall it on the new hard drive. Again, Flexi 12 is still Flexi 12, and it is somewhat cloud-based, but I just own the dongle for the license. I own the licensing for the program. So Flexi put it upon themselves somehow, some way, I believe, changed some of the settings in the production manager. I hope that clears some stuff up. See, so this is, this is the, Drive-E is, where Flexi used to be. So this is the hard drive for which Windows will not boot up on. I can fix it, sure, but 
Yeah, this was the easy, quick, easy fix, and I was still down for two days. So basically, I just cloned all the files onto this new hard drive for the version of Flexi that would run. <clears throat> for the most part, it's not a problem. Um, but I noticed today that in printing um, some signs, I generally have three profiles. And anyone that knows me or at least has reached out to me, I am more than willing to share those profiles because everyone knows that I print a lot with uh, the substance media. Um, so with those three profiles, two almost religiously, um, I use 98% of the time. Um, one when I'm printing on matte media and the other one uh, is when I'm printing on gloss. And it depends on how much saturation that everything has. But I also have a third that used to work really, really good. And that's when I was doing wraps. Um, it was a heavy saturation of ink and uh, never really had a problem with it until today. I'm gonna flip this camera. Over. So this is, so I'm first gonna say that these are identical files. There was nothing done in Flexi other than change the rip setting. So I'm gonna see if you all can kind of pick up on this. So I'm going to point some of this out, some of this banding up in here. So you see where it's darker blue and you, you get some of that banding where it actually looks purple up through there. And there's another spot. There's a spot. There's a spot. There's a spot. There's a spot. And then these are definitely more um, noticeable. I think I can see that through my camera, especially up through here. So you can see some of that purple area there. And at first you automatically assume that it's a printer error. Something's wrong with the printer because to me, that's exactly what it looks like. If I've got a damper getting clogged or I've got some ink that's running out or something skipping, um, you know, that's generally the first thing that one would assume. Um, luckily, I've been in this game long enough to where I try certain things before I really freak out. And the first thing that I did is I changed the profile. So this profile was apparently with my full on wrap where you can see the banding. And this was an Avery profile. And this is the same file, but this was actually printed with an Orcal profile. The colors are a little bit different, but you can see there's absolutely zero banding in here. I can also tell you that the grainy, the graininess, the dot pattern in this gray is very loose and spread out so that the dots are very far apart whereas you look at this one and they're actually very very tight together it makes a high a lot more resolution to wear it doesn't make sense to me but not a lot of things do um so basically changing a profile made all the diff difference in the world with uh the way that things print out so just wanted to kind of shoot some information off here to you guys i'm not going to take a lot of your time um generally you know it's not the equipment um, the equipment only does what you tell it to do. And, um, so, uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. Like I said, printing profiles are a huge part of, you know, printing for outdoor science, digitally, digitally printing. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a little hindsight, like I said, uh, you know, helping you guys out, don't freak out, keep it simple and just try to think through a lot of the stuff. So I'm actually, I'm going to show you, this is the profile I do believe that we are going to evaluate so out of these three profiles I'm going to show you which one so the very grainy one this top one up here this is the this was that Avery 10005 EZ 72720 graphics 2 is the one that gave me problems this one, this uh, 54720, generally I use um, I use that profile on matte media um, that doesn't require a lot of resolution. Um, and it generally works really, really good, you know, 95% of the time. But when I get to, a, I need a lot of density in the ink, um, a lot of density in the coverage, depending on what I'm printing, I will skip over to this profile, the Orcal 3651 GRA 72720 Graphics 1 um, profile. It puts down the perfect amount of ink. The colors are extremely close. And uh, these have always been my go-to profiles for anything that I print. Um, again, the 54720 is a lot higher, but 
uh, it doesn't put down near as much ink um, as this 720, 720. And uh, you know, the ink saturation is, uh, is way, way down. So just want to give you guys a heads up. That was kind of where I've been, what I've been doing. And I'm going to flip by here and I'm going to show you guys something that's coming up. Hopefully when I get the parts back for this thing. I'm just going to breeze by it real quick because it's cool. Okay, enough of that. So I got a video coming up with that. Um, that sucker's been uh, a work in progress as well. So cool, cool piece of equipment. I can't wait to actually get started on explaining and, and working with, with that printer. So, um, but anyways, um, until next time, hope you guys take care. Hope everyone's been well. Sorry for the delay. Life happens. Welcome back. And I'm glad you're here. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you like the content. And until next time, see you, sign folk. What you doing, extra cat? What are you doing, Nugget? Mal? Don't care, do you? You want to say hello?